Okay, so it's how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And I think we see all these elements in Acts 2 when it talks about here in the, the early church. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So there's the truth. And fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul. So I guess there's that, there's that uh, a ground of truth, right? That atmosphere to provoke unto love and good works. And many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. So there's the good works and the example that they're setting. And all that believed were, come, were together and had all things common. So isn't that like a family? You know, because in a family you have all things common. And sold their possessions and good and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So we see in there the godly atmosphere. We see the family. We see the pillar of truth, the ground of truth, and the good works, the, the praying uh, that the apostles were a good example, the, the loving one another um, materialistically, uh, helping one another. So with all that in mind, when we talk about the purpose of church, the last thing I just want to talk about is, well, if that's what a church should be, so that's what we should look for in a church, if we're looking for a church. Um, and I just wanted to say, you know, what I look for a church, and it's very common with, you know, I guess Stephen Anderson and the Bur David Bursons and all them that teach what we should look for in a church. But I just wanted to add a couple of my, my thoughts to it. Um, yeah, so number one, you know, what to look for a church. If it's a pillar and ground of the truth, they need to have the truth, right? So they need to be preaching the right gospel. I personally would never go to a church that has the wrong gospel. So even if everything else is great, you know, maybe they're using the King James Bible, maybe they have good fellowship, we've got friends there. If they do not have the right gospel, I would not want to be there because they may not even be saved. And what am I going to learn from somebody that doesn't even know what, what salvation is? I mean, you don't even know what salvation is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to teach me the rest of the Bible? Uh, that's like the foundation. You know, the Bible says the foundation can no man lay, which is Jesus Christ. If they don't have the gospel right, um, I would not go to that church. Another thing I would look for is they need to have the Word of God. So they need to be using the King James Bible. But, you know, to be honest, I would put the gospel in priority over the King James Bible. Because in, in Mexico, we went to a, a uh, Spanish-speaking church that did not use a Bible that was based on the King James Bible. Because all the churches that we... Because that, we went there to go to a church that had the right Bible, but they were preaching, repent of your sins. So we decided to move church and we had to decide, okay, do I go to a church that has the right Bible with the wrong gospel? Or do we, do we try and find a church that has the right gospel but not the right Bible? Well, I decided that to add a priority that it was more important to go to a church that had the right gospel than the right Bible because in the church that had the wrong gospel with the right Bible, I couldn't even go soul winning with them. Because I go soul winning with somebody and they're preaching repent of your sins, turn from your sins and blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, I, we're saying that it's not repent of your sins. So how do, I, how do I work together with this guy I'm going soul winning with when we're not even preaching the right gospel? So we, just, so we just stopped going soul winning to that church with that church and we started looking for another church because we wanted to go to a church where we can at least get involved in the soul winning. So we went to this church that was using a, a, you know, one that is like the NIV, it's the 1960, but they had the right gospel. I mean, ideally you'd have both, but I'm just showing you my sort of way of deciding which church I would go to. I would prioritize the gospel because number one then you'd know they're saved and number two you can get involved in the work there and preach the same gospel even though you know you can still use the king james bible so it'd be great that they have the king james bible they have the correct gospel you know it has to be the pillar and ground of truth so look for a church that has a godly environment i wouldn't go to a worldly fornication filled materialistic homosexual filled church because i want an environment that is conducive to raise my family in now a couple of other things i that I look for in a church where I wouldn't go there if, if it was me. Um, number, one, number one is where children are forced to be separated. So I would not go to a church where they would not allow my children to be in the gathering. They may have kids' church, they may have kids' ministries and stuff like that, but I would make sure if I was going to that church, you know, is it okay if my children sit with me? And you know, I'm not against you know, the kids' church and everything like that, but if they are forcing you to, to put your kids in another room. I mean, I personally wouldn't go there because it's important to me for my children to be in the church gathering. 
And the other thing, because soul winning is a big thing, even though a church doesn't have soul winning, I would still go there. But as long as that church is not anti soul winning, you know, like if you're trying to go door knocking or trying to get something and they're stopping you from doing it or they are against it, I wouldn't go to that church because it's just going to kill your fire. And, you know, it's probably not a good place to be if they are trying to stop people from going out and preaching the gospel. So those are the things I, I definitely look for in a church. I mean, some nice to have are the fact that they might have an organized soul winning program, that they might have all the right doctrines that we or that I attain to. But, you know, things like, you know, end times seems to be like a sticking point for some people where they will leave a church based on end times. But, you know, that's not something I would leave a church over. It's not something that I, I necessarily find important when going to a church um, because, you know, I mean, if you find it like here, hey, that's great, then move and, and get to that church. But I wouldn't just be out of church just because a church, you know, preached something that had nothing to do with salvation, even though they were wrong on the tribulation and the rapture. So, you know, another thing I think is a nice to have is a leader or a bishop or a pastor that you can look up to. Because I think that's really going to affect how you grow in that church is if you're in a church and you can't really respect the bishop or, you, you know, because you, when you don't respect him, when, he, when he's preaching things, you're not, you're not going to absorb it. You're going to have that frame of mind that you're trying to resist it. And I've been in that situation where you don't really respect the person that's preaching and you, you don't receive what they say. It, it just helps you. It's nice if you have somebody that you can look up to, that you can respect, then I think you will grow a lot more and you can follow their example you know you don't feel like you're constantly clashing with the example that's being set in church but what are a couple of reasons what are, you know what are a couple of reasons to leave a church you know you know, number one is maybe you're moving uh, but you're moving but there's an equally good church in that area that might be a reason to move if you need to move for work or whatever like that but you need to make sure that there is an equally good church in that area that you can be a part of that has all the things that we've talked about um, you know a reason you might want to leave a church is for doctrinal differences I mean maybe you don't agree with them doctrine I think that's a good reason to leave a church if there's a church that is more aligned with your doctrine hey you know you, you have my blessing you know go to that church that is more aligned with what you believe because you're going to grow a lot better in that church um, you know there might be a preference or conviction so you might have two churches that, hey, are right on salvation, both right on the King James and all the fundamental doctrines right. But, you know, that church actually is more closely aligned to your preferences. Maybe their dress standard is more aligned to your dress standard. And you might want to move to that church for that reason. I, find, I think that's, a, that's, that's an okay reason to, to move churches, um, but not a good reason to be out of church. And, and I was in that situation once. You know, when I was moving back to Australia, you know, we were looking at a church in Perth and we were looking at Lighthouse Baptist Church. And they were both soul winning, had the right gospel, King James only. But the church in Perth had a position where they just believed that the uh, King James Bible was just the best translation in English and not actually perfect. Whereas Mark Tossel believed it was perfect. And it was for that reason that I decided to move to Sydney and settle here instead of settling in Perth. Um, but, both you know, but if somebody's in Perth, we still go to that church. When we're in Perth, we go to that church because it's still a good church. You know, they have soul winning, they're preaching the right gospel. And, you know, I, I really um, love the, the bishop there. He's a, really, he's a really good godly man. Um, doctrinal differences, um, preference or conviction, or an unqualified bishop. That's a reason to leave a church. Let's say the bishop is committing adultery or married several times or, you know, is not the example that you see in the Bible. Um, I think that's a, that's a decent reason to leave a church and go to another. But lastly, what are some bad reasons to leave a church? Uh, because often people leave churches for these reasons, but it is a terrible reason to leave a church. Um, you know, number one is personal conflicts. You know, pe often people, you know, I think this is the number one reason people in our circle leave church, because they conflict with another person and then they go find another church to go to. You know, personal conflict is a really bad reason to leave a church because personal conflicts are inevitable. You know, if you spend enough time with people, I never leave, you, you know, you're going to rob me the wrong way, wrong way, I'm going to rob you the wrong way. So it's inevitable. So if you're leaving a church because of personal conflict, I mean, you're just going to meet it again at the next church you go to. But number two, you know, you've got to look at conflict a bit differently. You know, conflict is not a bad thing in and of itself because it's a chance for you to grow. But if you keep running away from that conflict, 
you know, you're not growing in that area, you may need to grow. And, is, and that is dealing in your personal relationships and how to deal with conflict. And if you have a conflict with somebody, having the spiritual maturity to go to them and try and make it right or to meet with them and talk about it, um, that's part of growing up uh, in, in uh, the Christian life. So think of it as a chance to grow closer. And, you know, number two, you should never, you should never run from your problems. You know, you should learn to face them. So, you know, I think that's a bad reason to leave the church. That's usually the, the, the only rat bad reason. I mean, another reason you might want to leave the church, I don't know whether it's a good or bad reason, but maybe how they use the finances. But I suppose you can keep going to that church and maybe just not give to it um, if you're not supporting how they uh, use the money.